Welcome to Essential 100, our journey during 2023 through the message of the Bible in 100 readings. Our readings are taken from Whitney T. Cunningham's book, Essential 100, published by Scripture Union. Each week we have a reading from the Old Testament and one from the New to help us reflect on the message of the Bible, God's love for us in Jesus Christ. Today we are reading Genesis chapter 12, verses 1 to 9. But first, an opening prayer from Whitney's book. Heavenly Father, your word is such an incredible gift. Speak to me in some specific way through it today. Our reading is Genesis chapter 12, verses 1 to 9. The Lord had said to Abram, Go from your country, your people, and your father's household to the land I will show you. I will make you into a great nation, and I will bless you. I will make your name great, and you will be a blessing. I will bless those who bless you, and whoever curses you I will curse, and all peoples on earth will be blessed through you. So Abram went as the Lord had told him, and Lot went with him. Abraham was 75 years old when he set out from Haran. He took his wife, Sarai, his nephew Lot, all the possessions they had accumulated and the people they had acquired in Haran, and they set out for the land of Canaan, and they arrived there. Abraham travelled through the land as far as the site of the great tree of Mori at Shechem, at that time, the Canaanites were in the land. The Lord appeared to Abraham and said, To your offspring I will give this land. So he built an altar there to the Lord who had appeared to him. From there he went on towards the hills east of Bethel and pitched his tent, with Bethel on the west and I on the east. There he built an altar to the Lord and called on the name of the Lord. Then Abraham set out and continued towards the Negev. At Whitney T. Cunningham writes, The Bible got off to a great start with the miracle of creation and the beauty of the Garden of Eden. But as we've seen, once sin entered the world, everything took a turn for the worse. After less than a dozen chapters in Genesis, God has already had to punish humankind by nearly wiping them out with a flood and then scattering them because of their pride at the Tower of Babel. The world was unravelling. But God's plan was to create a people, a nation, Israel, and through them, to bless the whole world with a saviour. But of all the people in the world, why did God single out Abraham to receive such an incredible promise? The first thing we see about Abraham is that Abraham did what God had told him to do. Abraham is called the father of the faithful for a very good reason. But Genesis 12 verse 1 says, The Lord had said to Abraham, Leave your country and go to the land that I will show you. And verse 4 says, So Abraham left. We're not actually told explicitly how long after Abraham had been told to leave that he actually left. I find that really encouraging. Sometimes when the Lord tells us to do something, we do it immediately. Other times, however, there is a delay. Is there something God has told you to do? Maybe told you to do something even a long time ago. Genesis chapter 12 perhaps reminds us 
that it's never too late to do what God is calling you to do. Maybe the right time has now finally come. And the second thing we read about Abraham is that when he left, he left even though he wasn't sure precisely where he was going. Go to the land, I will show you. That tells us that we don't have to know exactly where we're going when we set out with Jesus. But setting out, we can do so knowing that he knows best. And as the hymn says, he knows the way he taketh. Maybe there's somewhere the Lord wants you to be. Different to where you are now. And the third thing we read about Abraham is that when the Lord appeared to him and told him he had finally arrived in the place that he was meant to be in. We read that in verse 7, so he built an altar there to the Lord. Like Noah before him, the first thing Abraham did when he had arrived safely was to build an altar and worship. These three things we read about Abraham. That it's never too late to do what the Lord has called you to do. That doing it, setting out on whatever journey it is the Lord is calling us to, we don't have to know precisely where we're going so long as we are taking the next step with Jesus. And when we have arrived, how important it is that we build an altar, give thanks and worship. Some questions for us to think about today. How did God find you and how have you responded to him? What detours have you encountered in your journey through life? What did God teach you through these experiences? And a prayer to send us into the day ahead. Thank you, Father, for making the first move to find me. I don't fully understand your love for me, but I'm so grateful for it. Lord, I, I don't know if, I'm, if I am yet where you really want me to be. But help me now to follow you every step of my journey. In Jesus' name I pray.